Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we're talking about the NOPD policy as it pertains to police chases. Now all of this grows out of an incident that happened last week. Late Wednesday night, NOPD was pulling over two people they suspected to be in a stolen vehicle. It happened in the Broadmoor area near Washington Avenue. Allegedly, those two people sped off. They then crashed the vehicle into a well-known business, Unity One Hair Salon. The two suspects died. Also, another woman who was in the salon died just a few days ago. It's all under police investigation, and we're going to talk more on that. To talk more on this topic, we have Mike Kahn, former NOPD officer and security expert, and Donovan Livicari, a former police officer who represents the Fraternal Order of Police. Let's just get to the latest. The police said initially that they did not chase these two people in the stolen vehicle. Then that changed. They said that they had reason to believe that they may have, so it was under an internal investigation. And then late last week, they announced that the two officers involved were placed on administrative reassignment. I have the manual here. There's really a difficult policy in New Orleans when it comes to police chases. We're going to get to you in a second, Donovan. Mike, let's start with you. When it comes to vehicle pursuits, what is the policy in a nutshell for the NOPD? So in order for you to chase a vehicle, it has to be the perpetrator of a violent felony. So one of the felonies, and it has to be a violent felony for you to request to pursue that vehicle and in fact do so. This was not, it's our understanding, would fall under the guidance or under the guidelines of a police chase. Let me read it to you here. It says that pursuits of property offenses, misdemeanor offenses, traffic or civil infractions are prohibited. Officers must receive supervisory approval prior to initiating the pursuit. Would this fall under that, given the fact they thought they were stopping a stolen vehicle? Correct. If, in fact, they did think it was a 67A, which is a stolen vehicle, you don't have the right to pursue that. This is under internal investigation. Donovan, you represent a lot of officers with the Fraternal Order of Police. I don't know if you're involved in this case yet. I don't believe you are. But what are your thoughts on the vehicle pursuit policy from an FOP, Fraternal Order of Police, standpoint? I, I think that part of the problem is that, you know, it's easy to say you can only chase if it's a violent felony. Uh, and the, but the real question has become what actually constitutes a chase? When does a chase begin? When does a chase end? Uh, when is a traffic stop a traffic stop? And when it, does it become a pursuit? It's just not that clear. So is this, I mean, look, this, this grew out of the consent decree. Police chases are highly controversial because no one wants police chasing a suspect and then having some innocent bystander get hit or get struck. That's exactly what happened on Wednesday night. An innocent business burned and now an innocent bystander has been killed. Is this put in place to protect the public and the officers? Absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's a safety aspect where it's very hard on both sides. The police officer out there has a reasonable suspicion or cause to stop that vehicle. Uh, they don't want to let the vehicle get away. Uh, it's, it's put out there to prevent you from getting someone else hurt or killed in a, in a very minor stop or for just a property crime, a stolen vehicle, and not uh, exigent circumstances or someone's life being in danger. These officers... We don't know if they pursued or not. The indications are from the NOPD that they may have. That's why they took this action that they did, launching an internal investigation and then reassigning these two officers who have not been named yet publicly. But how does an investigation like this go, Donovan? You've represented a lot of officers who have found themselves in positions like this. How does the NOPD proceed with something like this? I, I do, in fact, represent some of the officers in this case. Okay. Um, so they're going to... Uh, they're going to review all the video evidence um, and talk to witnesses. Uh, what hasn't happened yet in this case is that they haven't spoken with the officers yet. So they only have one side of the story at this point. Um, the officers will come in later and give them what they saw, what they did, and uh, everything from their perspective. And then the investigators will be able to put both of those things together and have a clear picture of the entire incident. The fact that you do represent these officers, and let's talk about this for the public, because a lot of people watch TV, they see things on social media, they feel that, hey look, if somebody did something bad, rob a bank, commit a murder, steal a car, police can chase them, but that's not really reality in the city of New Orleans. Why do policies like this exist, Mike? 
You know, the intent of the policy is to protect the citizens and to protect anyone from getting hurt when you engage in a pursuit at what could be high speeds for a minor infraction. Um, the other side of it is that it's hard, again, for that officer to know exactly. Sometimes it's something they see. Sometimes you could have a kidnapped subject inside that vehicle, and you're not sure until you make that stop and you see what you have in there, why the car was running red lights, or why it was speeding. So the policy is, in fact, to prevent you from getting in chases for minor issues. And you and I talked about this. Officers want to be proactive, and you want officers being proactive out there, taking criminals off the streets. But, Donovan, does this put officers in a trick bag because they want to do the right thing, but they don't know what the right thing is. Because when you read the policy, it's in black and white, but there are shades of gray here. It, it does cause problems. And as you pointed out, that you, know, the pol you can read the policy and you think, oh, th this is a clear issue, right? You're either chasing or you're not chasing. But it's simply not that clear. Um, you know, on, to some extent, an officer engages in some type of cha uh, chase every time they stop a violator, right? If you stop somebody on the interstate for speeding, you have to catch up to that person, signal that person to stop, and then proceed to stop, right? But that doesn't qualify as a chase. Um, the, you know, typically the offender has to do something, take some kind of action to evade the police before it becomes a chase. Let me ask you about this topic right here. It says in the policy here that any officer that wants to engage in a chase has to get approval from a supervisor before they do so. I don't know if that happened in this case. I'm sure that's part of the investigation. But is that really reality nowadays, given the fact that things are happen happening in the blink of an eye in a split second time frame here? Can you really get on the radio and find a supervisor and call somebody to give you approval for a chase? So, in fact, what you're saying, a lot of times, uh, and I can tell you from being there, you'll see something that, that'll make you initiate the chase. You'll turn on your lights and siren and you'll try and stop the vehicle. If the vehicle then tries to flee from you and that vehicle does not pull over, you get on the radio, you put your unit number out and you request permission from your rank to pursue. Your rank is going to ask you what are the reasons why you're trying to pursue this vehicle. If they give you permission to pursue this vehicle, the whole time you're following the vehicle now and you're engaging in somewhat of a pursuit until the rank decides it needs to be stopped or they give you permission. Then during that, the ranking officer is going to ask you what, are the, what does the conditions look like outside? Is it a lot of traffic? Are you going through school zones? Is it 5 in the afternoon or is it 1 in the morning? What are the speeds that you're traveling at? And they're going to look at all these things to decide whether that chase should continue to go or it needs to be stopped. When, in fact, the chase has been terminated by a ranking officer, you actually have to stop your vehicle and turn your vehicle in another direction other than where you were chasing the vehicle or pull to the side of the road. So in that part, it is clear. It's clear, but is that difficult to put an officer in? Like you said, you've been there and you've been there. Both of you all during your time with NOPD worked in the traffic division. Doesn't make things difficult for officers. I mean, I know the policy's in place and it's there for a reason, but does that make the job more challenging? It makes it more challenging in that you have to try and get that information out very quickly. And a lot of times that vehicle you're pursuing may get into a wreck or within the first minute or so while you're giving this information, putting it across the radio. It, it does add a challenge and it gives you a bit of a defeatness in the event that you're trying to stop a vehicle and you get called off of that chase because you don't have the right reasons for it. Is that what you were touching on too, Donovan, the fact that there are a lot of layers? I hate to use the term bureaucracy, but it is a policy here. Are there layers of bureaucracy for officers in the field who want to do a chase like this but feel like I have to hit all these checks and balances before I may be allowed to? Yes, and you'd better do it because they review the videos on these uh, officers on a regular basis. And if they come across an incident where uh, you do something that they perceive as a, a chase and you hadn't asked for permission, uh, then you, you're going you're gonna to be disciplined for it. So you've got to take the actions that are in that policy uh, or else. And um, it, it does make life difficult uh, for the officers on the street. God, I will tell you this, the policy itself, when you read it, is clear. And they do have a lot of training throughout the year. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's gone into it, making sure that you do understand. Again, it's a time process. When you're trying to get on the air and there are other people on the radio, there are other things going on, and for everything to start usually takes more time than the chase beginning. Does this come down, when the NOPD reviews this, does this come down to a, what is a chase? And there's going to be video. There may, there may be body camera video. There may be dashboard video. There's a real-time crime camera right there where this happened. But 
Does it come down to, and you're representing somebody now in this, does it come down to what is the definition of a chase? I certainly think that's part of the question. I mean, uh, you know, there, you know, Mike says the, the, the policy is clear, and I agree that there are aspects of the policy that are clear, but my, the whole uh, part of this uh, chase thing that Mike described about what you have to do to terminate a police, I mean a chase, is found in the definition section of the chapter. It's not in the instructions part of it. It's tucked away somewhere up in the definitions. So if you don't go through that thing with the fine tooth comb, uh, it, it's not that hard to miss it. I, I think that they need to constantly be revising these regulations. Uh, you know, every time they run into something that, that causes a problem, and uh, get it fixed up so that they don't run into those problems again. Final question, are these officers in jeopardy of losing their jobs because of something like this, because of police officers, and the public is watching this right now, looking at this saying, look, I may understand this stuff since you've explained it properly here, but it seemed like these officers were trying to pull over guys who were up to no good, allegedly in a stolen vehicle, and now they could be terminated. Are jobs on the line here? Let me say this, um, uh, Travis, you know, th this, um, these officers really went to bat for the public in, in, in this instance. And I'm not talking about the attempt to, to stop this stolen vehicle, but that the efforts that they undertook at that burning building were, were downright heroic. Uh, you know, these officers knew, they found out shortly after getting to the burning building that there were people inside that building. And these officers went uh, in at their own peril to go remove people from that building who certainly would have been severely injured if not killed had they not done so. Which is heroic, nobody's gonna argue that, but what's under review unfortunately here is how this all started with the chase. And let me ask you Mike, our job is on the line here. Is this something where these officers could possibly be terminated over something like this? Uh, I, I believe so. I believe it's a, a disciplinary policy. There, there are increments they'll look at during the course of this. There are certain violations, administrative and other, that they'll look at what happened. They'll look at the totality of the situation, loss of life, what ended because of the pursuit, and what were the reasons to initiate the pursuit to begin with. Um, I absolutely believe that, that you could be looking at termination in these situations, depending on what facts are found during the course of this. Right. They'll also look at you know, they'll look at the video, they'll look at speeds, they'll look at locations. So by the time it's over with, they'll be able to pinpoint exactly what was going on during the course of this.